This episode one, two, or three. The ultimate deck podcast. Need a show about outdoor living? This is where it's at with your host, Shane Chapman and Way Red. Thank you for tuning in. Now let the show begin. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate deck podcast. Let's go. Hello, everybody, my gorgeous people. It's beautiful outside. I'm in a good mood. You? Because you're selling decking. Yeah, it's hard to be in a bad mood when March starts off like it has for our business. That's for wow. sure. So we're excited about that. I, I was actually so excited that I, I chewed up and spit out the intro there for the first time ever. Had to restart had the to, start. Uh, had to do that one two times. <laughs> what? This, epi- this, this episode. episode. This, is, uh, this episode yeah. was brought to you by. Who? Tuds.ca backslash oh. butt shop. <laughs> <laughs> My head is really full of things today. It always is, but like really hard to concentrate today. And yeah, of course, you can now buy uh, podcast gear at tuds.ca slash pod shop. They got some funny little quirky sayings in some of them. Some of them are just like branded gear for the podcast, but why not? Why not rock it? Did you get that AMC one passed through? I did. See? I didn't notice it the other day. All of a sudden it went through and I was like, there we go. That's the best one. No. Ryobi for life is the best one. <laughs> Ryobi, Ryobi for life. That was pretty solid too. <laughs> was my first drill set so yeah if you want to get on the uh on the the bandwagon of repping podcast swag we got we got the podcast logo designs up there but we also got some really funny ones like ryobi for life the gangster hashtag we've got the amc anti-miter coalition and we've got the show me your track saw design up there right now too so Mm -hmm. we'll keep spitting some of those out as we say funny things in the podcast we'll turn them into t-shirts that's right (laughs) right why not that's what we do Good, um, uh, a lot of people saying hi in here already. Yeah, yes. good. Got what good, up? Got a good crowd. Uh, Jace is in here. Haven't seen him in a while. He must have a lead on what the topic is today. I wonder. Did he? I didn't tell him. What's but the I know topic? Scott knows, and Scott knows Jace, and Jace knows. And I oh. might have, you know, added them in the. Well, he story posted. Today. Yeah, yeah, he posted it. Today. <laughs> Uh, we're supposed to be posting it pretty, days ahead. We got hours today. We got hours. We, we, well, we not bad. We hours. were supposed to start at three. It's three twenty. So yeah, yeah. I think everybody has a pretty good idea of. How we run this thing? I think we've got more flexibility anyway because the time has changed. So now Eastern time zone is two hours ahead. Oh yeah, I said Central. You said 3 p.m. Central, which right. is fine. It's just that the Eastern guys have to do some math now. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. So it's five o'clock Eastern for them now. Um, perfect. So what? They're done Look work. At, TC Dex said he ordered his already. You guys track something? Did he? Good for him. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Okay, so before we get to this, there's a we put. <sighs> Bryce posted something that was a little bit cringeworthy the other day for me. Poke the bear. Poke the bear. He, yeah, which he, one? you posted the which, clip. Which <laughs> thing did I post that was cringe? You didn't know. We're just going to bring it up right now. So the he posted a clip from one of our podcast episodes, and it was about contractors should charge for estimates. I don't know that it said that up front. It was like, you should charge for estimates. And so I believe I re- that it was me that was like. It said Wade's wisdom. Wade's yeah, it was wisdom. Wade's wisdom. You should charge for estimates. And so, and I, I like, we believe that. We should think that sh- contractors should. However, I was like, we don't because we're not contractors. We And we have estimators and our job is to figure out materials and sell them to people. And so we don't. But what I was worried was is that people were going to believe that that implied that we did mm. right and a customer might see and be like they charge for estimates so anyways the the clarification for me was <laughs> no we no we don't charge because we had a couple people reach out and be like you guys charge for estimates no we don't but that's because we're not a contractor our we have entire staff right and overhead designed around figuring out materials for people and giving them to them and whether you're a contractor or a homeowner or whatever mm-hmm. we're not trying to eliminate a certain subset of the demographic of people. We sell materials to everybody like any lumber yard or mm-hmm. box store or anything would. But as a contractor, when you're a small operation that needs to, you know, use your time efficiently. Yep. You should weed out some people. Charge for estimates. Only work for people that want to work with you. Mm-hmm. It's way harder as a contractor who cares about his craft to be the contractor for everybody than it is for a lumberyard to be a place that everybody can shop. Mm -hmm. So these guys that are running these one amount of operations or one crew operations that are working all day on the tools. I think it was one people. One people operations. One people operations. One person. Are working on the tools all day long and then have to do their quotes and estimates and takeoffs and everything else after hours. What the benefit of charging is, is you're going to weed out the people that you were never going to win anyway. And I'm not saying every guy, everybody should charge for estimates either. I'm saying the guys who want to do higher end work should charge for estimates. Mm. 
if you want to be a Kijiji warrior oh. and do it for the bottom dollar, then obviously you don't want to charge for estimates. Put that on a shirt. Kijiji warrior. Kijiji warrior. Hashtag Kijiji warrior. Hashtag Kijiji warrior. So just to clarify that a little bit, right? You don't, like we're not saying you have to charge for estimates, but if you want to attract higher end clientele and you don't want to waste your time with people that aren't wanting what you offer, then charge a small fee up front. You can refund it back if they go with you, but just make sure your time's being paid for. Like I said to a few guys have been messaging us about this um, thus far, most contractors who are trying to do high quality work would rather do a consultation and estimate for 20 people and land 18 jobs than for a hundred people to land 20 jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we should, I think we should clarify what happens because we do charge for an on-site consultation. I would say we don't even do on-site consultations. We will do an on-site Sometimes measurement. We, yeah. Like sure. if somebody's like, I can't, I'm, I, w- I would rather somebody come out and just take measurements. We, c- we offer to do that and we charge a small fee and then we either hire a contractor and pay them to go do it or we'll go do it if we happen to be in the area, whatever. Just, just the measurement. If they want somebody to come and sit down mm-hmm. in their kitchen and go through sample colors like a contractor normally would and go through like the, the big cell job mm-hmm. and look at the yard and give ideas and sketch things out and you're there for 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. As a retailer, we don't do that. If somebody wants that, we say get a hold of, and we give them two or three contractors that they yep. might want to follow up with to, to get that mm. on-site consultation. Cause we don't do an on-site consultation. Mm-hmm. Now that that said, sometimes there's a project that's a large thing and it's involving a lot of contractors or a commercial job. And we might go out and have a look at things to make sure that like to get it, understand mm-hmm. the scale of it before we do a yeah quote for it or something. But mm-hmm. generally that's what we do. We, we feed the work to the contractors for them to do the consultations. So Simcoe commented on this and here's how he does it. He charges $150, but as soon as any money is on the table, you will find out who is just wasting your time. Are you going to get a lot of no's Absolutely. But you were going to get that no if you went out there anyways. Only difference is the customer is going to waste a bunch of your time. Exactly. Mm. I also think it is very important to give ballpark estimates before going on site. Listen to what they want and give them an educated guess. Maybe that client thought they could actually get everything they wanted for 10K, but you go out and crush and crush their dreams, tell them it's 40K, and then you charge them $150 on top of that. That makes you look like a real a-hole. Set the expectation before, get to the point. Set the expectation before it gets to that point. For me, going to site is pretty much only for closing deals. I'm going there to propose a deal. So basically, Simcoe is saying like, he charges for estimates. He charges $150 for an estimate, but he has already sort of pre-qualified his customer. Mm -hmm. You've sent me a drawing or an idea. I'm telling you it's going to cost you about this much. Do you still want me to come out? Mm -hmm. Yep, still come out. So I think that's a pretty fair way to do that. Is that, is there like, is that cause there's a fear though too from like, I feel like you need to ask your customer what their budget is. Yeah. They're never going to tell you. Well, I know they, never, they, they don't, don't want, want to, to tell you, but, but if they were, they'd get better service. Yeah. They, they absolutely have to. They, at some point they have to point. tell you. The problem is they may not know what it's supposed to be. That's what I find. Like there's a trust issue obviously sometimes. And as mm-hmm. a retailer, here that's been around for a while that has a physical location. It's easier for people to trust us than it is for a guy who pulls up in a pickup truck. I get that. But at some point they need to give you some, what they're working with, but they may honestly have no idea. Mm -hmm. Like they may have the capacity to spend $30,000, but they don't want to say that because they're not sure if it's supposed to cost that. Mm. So it does come down to a trust issue, but I like, I feel kind of foolish too, when I'm trying to buy something that I don't know anything about, like, I don't know if it's supposed to be a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. I'm not sure. And so when somebody's like, well, what are you looking to spend? I don't want to, I don't want to sound foolish and like undervalue what it's supposed to actually be and be like, well, 200 bucks. And then they're like, uh, this is like three grand. And then you'd be like, oh shoot, I guess I'm dumb. Like, okay, then I'll spend the three grand. I guess that's what it is. But I, without knowing I'm scared to like show Mm -hmm. that I'm dumb Mm -hmm. to it or ignorant to it. Right. So anyway, that's, we've said this a million times before every single contractor we've ever talked to, which is quite a few that have ever decided to start charging for estimates has said not even that it was like a good, it was a good thing. They wouldn't go back, but that many have said that's the best move they've ever made in their business. Mm-hmm. You've just bought your life back. That's right. Yep. This like to go to an, imagine to go to an hour long consultation at somebody's kitchen table mm-hmm. plus travel time in a, in a good city, city, both ways, your minimum an hour yep. travel time, if not more. 
So you're two to three hours of your time to go talk to somebody. And then you've got to do all the work Mm -hmm. of doing the actual takeoff. And some guys would do that quickly. Some guys would put a bit more effort in. Some guys would do a drawing. That's another yeah. hour, two, three. Like, who knows? Some people have spreadsheets. Yep. So you could be five or six hours, mm-hmm. hours of time invested into somebody who has no intention of ever hiring what you do. Send them to the deck shop because that's where they can see <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> but right? So, and, you're, and, I mean, and some what, people yeah. are saying yeah. like, well, I'm not going to charge. What? You can't do this. You can't. No. You can't have... Seven people a day expect you to come out and do a quote for them and you say yes to everything. You can't. You get zero dollars. 35 hours a day in quotes. And zero dollars. Zero dollars. You might land one. Yeah. Out of seven. If you're lucky. Mm Mm-hmm. Start. So preach, Shane. The fear. The fear is the phone's going to stop ringing. Yeah. It's not going to ring as much. That's true. And that's the best thing that's going to happen to you. Amen. Right? (laughs) So, like I said, quote less, win more. Whoa, whoa, that sounds like a t shirt. That's a t shirt. (laughs) Come on. You guys are with me, right? So, what do you. Of course, we're with you. What do you. (laughs) Can I have in there for comments? Okay. First of all, Donning and Decking just walks back into this podcast like he hasn't been missing for two months and says squat. Complete. He, He gave a wave. He's been missing. Yeah, but before that wave, this is like the last time we saw him. It was in November. Yeah, this is like I don't even remember what that. His face was. has been on a milk carton for three months, and he shows back up, up and waves and sits down for supper like he's been. It's deck season, like he was guys. gone for five minutes. <laughs> Scroll back down. Let's see what uh, okay. Eric had to say. There was some Eric had some comments. Uh, first, actually, let's get to Hickory Dickory Dex. Yeah, yeah, Halifax. Okay. Send an emi- he uh, said, send an initial email with a list of questions. Then you can gauge seriousness based on client's response. Yep. You some have sort, to do some, some sort, sort of, of qualifying. Yeah, right? exactly. Yep. Yeah. Nailed it. Eric said, I had an aha moment this week. I sent a client another con. Fr- uh, I sent a client from another contractor who charges for design. The selling process is a thousand times easier, willing to upgrade to steel framing. Did, yep. I, did I read that correctly? I think it was uh, lost in translation. Lost in translation a little bit. <laughs> He's probably still recovering from his birthday. Happy birthday, oh, Eric. Oh, yeah. Right? That was Half last week. Birthday. A big five zero for him. So uh, there was a comment on that thread. Pretty much every contractor on that post Boom. was saying, yep, this is great. You absolutely should charge. But there was one guy, I don't remember who it was, that said, nope, that's, that's, part of, that's the cost of doing business, is what he said. Cost of doing business. <laughs> and and I, I wasn't going to step in and say anything, but my thought was, you're right. It's a cost of doing business. Mm. Oh, you were going to change the punctuation uh, on this. Well done, Shane. It is a cost. Pause. Cost. <laughs> Semicolon. A cost <laughs> of doing business. And if you don't cover your costs. That's right. You're out of business. You go out of business. You can come work for the Ultimate Deck Shop. I'm so, super happy to have you. <laughs> there's two ways to cover your costs. Charge for it. To start a podcast or absorb it into something else. And the best thing that I've ever heard <laughs> from somebody, you guys are on fire today. <laughs> the best thing I've ever heard from somebody is if you don't charge the people that you're doing the quotes for, the people that win that actually hire you pay yeah. for all the people that didn't. Oh, yeah. Because you have, you can't not uh, uh, like make money off your time. So, therefore, the guy that says yes has to pay for the nine guys that wasted your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, look at it that way and tell your customers about it that way too. Why do you charge? If I didn't charge, I would have to raise my prices. So by charging you this upfront fee, mm-hmm. I weed out some of the tire kickers that waste, you know, my time, company time, truck time, every mm-hmm. time, everything time. And so therefore I can keep my prices more competitive. My mom did chime in on that. She chimed in and the guy was, so it was that same person that was like, she did. Yeah. Cost of doing business. Yeah. And mom was like, yeah, well tell that to dentists, lawyers, and doctors. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right. Exactly. Hey, Lawyers charge for an email. <laughs> like, yeah. We're not saying that, but that's, yeah, that's out there. Quigley deck says, since I started charging for estimates, phone calls, emails dropped by 75% quality of inquiries way up and only get inquiries from people ready to do business. I have a lot of emails. We should charge more. For Char- estimates. Charge. We charge per email. Should we charge for emails. <laughs> Printing money. Yeah. We should charge so, for emails between us. There's the clarification. <laughs> there, yeah. There's the clarification from my end. I feel like, I hope you clean that up, clear it up. And I, and again, I wanted to distinguish between estimate, rough estimate, and on-site consultation. 
I just want to note that I came in here today and asked Shane what we should do for a podcast topic today, and this almost made it. This, this is almost the whole topic. Th- yeah. It's already over. It's good. We did 15 minutes of value this time. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> I got nothing today. Do you have the moment I, of uselessness? No. Well, that was it then? <laughs> usefulness. Yeah, a moment today. of usefulness. Usefulness. Today. Uh-oh. Show change. Uh-uh-uh. All right. Well, are we going to get on to it then? I didn't bring enough coffee. This could be a long one, so let's get to it. Uh, today, we are talking about why would you ever buy decorators? There's a number of reasons. Oh, good. <laughs> you can start now. Okay. <laughs> well, well, maybe, where, I'm ready to listen. Well, maybe you had the reasons ready to go. I do. I ha- I'm just going to fact check you. Okay. I'm the, uh, the fact checker today. Okay, Quigley Dex, before we get to it, says he also states on his website that he charges $145 for an on-site consultation. I think you should round it up to $150. So, those are Australian But then some dollars, people won't they? call me. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Some people won't call you. That's the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> some people won't. Okay, um, Decorators is a very large brand. People are not as familiar with it. Uh, as a decking product, maybe still, I think that's changing, at least in the social media world where they're very active, that's certainly changing. Yes. Uh, but for the average homeowner, they're probably much more unaware of the brand of decorators. And if they are aware of it, they're probably aware of it because of other products that decorators has released over the Our years. podcast. Because they've watched the 50th and the 100th episode of the Ultimate Deck Podcast. Right? Don't <laughs> underestimate the authority. <laughs> that's oh right. Boy. We have in this <laughs> continent. All 16 people right there. All of them. Look, 15. 15. One was Piss like, somebody uh, off. Oh. <laughs> These guys are clowns. Close. Who's Jace? <laughs> Jace. Uh, <laughs> so the brand of decorators manufactured by UFP, uh, who does all sorts of things. What does so UFP you, stand for, Shane? Universal Forest Products. What? Did we figure it out? Because I'm pretty sure Wade and I had a whole, like, 15 minutes I believe they've well done some... back when you were gone <laughs> trying to figure this out. Oh, that was a serious question? You thought you were stumping me on that? No, so I, I, believe no, no, I they, wasn't stumping you. I, I believe like... they tweaked some things, though, and they have, like, UFI or UF... I don't like track in fact. UTI? Yeah. UTI, UTI, that was it. Like UTI. They've got a division of UTI? Uh, so... <laughs> Universal Forest Industry? I don't know. They, they I just don't like, like acronyms. And it's not that I don't like them. I like acronyms. It's really efficient. Uh, uh, Bryce, if you could take name? down that AMC shirt off oh, the website, and, it's pissing, uh, you know pissing weight off. What about Tud's The name to Tud's <laughs> is a big... Anyways, I just think that there should be clarification. UFP is like, yes, let's go ahead and use that. Yeah. What does it mean? Sure. Also, Tud's. Also what does Tuds. it mean? What does it mean? Tuds. Do you want to tell a funny story? About, you know, I had a call the other day about Tuds. So let's... Let's 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 give some use, <laughs> uselessness to this podcast. Oh, okay, phew. Oh, make, J- make Jace hang in the edge of his seat, waiting for the stuff. He's a, yeah. UFP Industries. There we go. UFPI. UFPI. Uh, <laughs> so when we first started this business, uh, I remember the moment that we decided what the name was going to be. You and I were going back and forth, and what do we call this place? It needs to be mm-hmm. something that's going to describe what it is. Like, it, I don't think it should be overly cute. It should be to the point, but it should be something like impactful and memorable. And and we, I don't so know, we I said don't, Shane and Wade's great lumber yard. Yeah, <laughs> didn't make it. Didn't make the cut. Shane and Wade's decks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that one was close. <laughs> that was really close because it was catchy. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I don't. I honestly don't remember anything that we might have. I don't remember a single one in the on the other eighteen podcasts we've we done. We always tell all people what were the other names you kicked around, and I honestly don't remember any other names that we kicked around. I remember being stuck and not knowing what it was going to be. And I remember phoning you at night as I was about to crawl into bed and saying, what about just the ultimate deck shop? Like, Mm -hmm. I know it's not fancy, but it tells exactly what we do. We do decks better than anybody else. The ultimate place to shop for a deck, the ultimate deck shop. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'll do it. And so that was it. But I don't remember before that. Anyway, so then it was like, well, what are we going to make this domain name be? Because I was, as a marketing guy, I was always like, you don't want a big, long domain that's tough to type in, but right. Um, what's your uh, what's your website? www.theultimatedeckshop.com backslash. <laughs> yeah. Right? And they're like, can you spell that for me? Uh, they're all just normal words. Yeah, they're normal words. Come on. Uh, yeah. Is so it, I, I knew at that time that we didn't want to, I didn't want to use T-U-D-S. I didn't want to use TUDS because it sounded fat to me. 
I agree. Tubby. Tubby. Tubs. That's why we hey, used tubs. the font we used. Tuds. <laughs> You've see, you can see that this has come full circle. So I remember specifically being like, I don't want tuds. And I remember having this conversation with you. It we sounds fat. And you're like, yep. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so let's stay away from it. So then what are we going to do? Are we going to do ultimate deck shop.com or are we going to put the in there? Like we want to be known. We want to be the ultimate deck shop. Mm-hmm. But then I got it twisted in my head thinking that, well, the the is unnecessary typing. We should just drop the the and do ultimate deck shop. So that's what we did. That Years was, later, I regretted it. One of the domains we bought. Yeah. Years later, I regretted it. Funny story. One of our competitors, who's really like, he's a cute, cute little guy. Cute little guy. He got like, he's got access to grind. Bought up the ultimate deck shop and held it for years. And I didn't even notice until years later when I started to think like, should we have the in it? Or should we shorten this or whatever? Started looking. I was like, oh, that's funny. He bought it years ago. And he I bought it. it. Yeah. So anyways, he we have it, it now. Alive. Yeah. He kept it alive for a while, but like yeah. he kept renewing it and then anyways. Yeah. So as we started working towards launching our new e-commerce website, which is fully functioning, all the inventory, all the pricing, everything, a bit like real, real e-com now, not just kind of f- throwing some stuff on Shopify. Uh, I was like, we need this to be more memorable, easier to spell, easier to type. I was also sick of typing in my email address, Shane at ultimate deck on yeah. every login form I ever had to go log into something with. It mm-hmm. was annoying to me. Plus on the phone, when somebody calls, uh, yeah, just email it to us. Okay. What's your email? Okay. It's Shane at... Yeah. Ultimate. Okay. Deck. Okay. Deck. Yeah. D E C K. Okay. Shop.com. Like S H O P with P P E. Two P. No, just shop.com. The ultimate deck shop.com. That's what you're doing on the phone all the time. Yeah. I'm like, this is freaking silly. Unbelievable. I want to be able to get to this fast. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. Tuds is going to become our online brand and I'm going to embrace fat and it's going to be big fat letters, big fat letters, and people are going to see it and they're going to think fat and they're going to remember it because of that. So now welcome to our big fat new brand. So we have to eat more now. If we have pizza at lunchtime, it was the only thing holding me back from becoming an employee here. (laughs) (laughs) That just came up. The day we switched out, he's like, so you guys still hired? 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 Uh, Finally. You guys need a guy? So Tuds, that's it. That's it. Um, but Great. the story was yesterday we, I had a call from the, a girl from another contractor looking for the, uh, deck for the, uh, for the community fridge thing. Oh yeah. Talked on the phone and she, same thing. What's your email? And I said, it's email it to this Shane at tuds.ca. She's like, tuds. Oh, that's funny. Tuds.ca. It sounds like she commented. I was like, it's, I, it's, it sounds kind of fat. She's like, yeah, it sounds like, sounds like, Ugh. <laughs> like yeah. And I was like, that's what we were always worried about, but I'm ready to embrace it. So mm. bring it on. And the fact that you're talking about it right now is fantastic. Because yeah. we're 40. It's like when, we're, you, when you get 40, you're just like, meh. Yeah. Whatever. It's, sounds like it should have been part of an Eddie Murphy movie. That describes the spare tire around your waist. <laughs> that's, that is a Tuds. Yeah. <laughs> that's your Tuds. <laughs> it's like, we be, the decks are so strong. <laughs> oh, better, better. Eat some more salads. Got to work on my Tuds here. Okay. Okay. Get to it. Decorators. Uh, UFP, enough with the acronyms, has a number of boards. Now, you know them from accessories of decks, uh, post cap lights, balusters, all that stuff. They have a phenomenally good decking product as well. And so... Mm-hmm. Just one? You should know about it. Yeah, the rest of them are shitty. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of shitty stuff and then there's... A... No, it's all good stuff. <laughs> the ones that are shitty are the ones that they have exclusivity with with boxers. Shitty boards. <gasps> <gasps> I'm just, I'm kidding. Dun, dun, dun. But anyways, but they do make some, they do make some um, private label stuff for the boxers, like a Veranda line board for the boxers. And they do some of that, that stuff, right? So, mm-hmm. but what we're, so we're not talking about those because they're not available anywhere. They're only available in some places. But what is available is this fantastic lineup of decking right here. Now they make both a traditional wood plastic comp- uh, composite with a cap on it. Okay. Like everybody does. WCP. And then they've also mm-hmm. branded a new category PC. of oh, maintenance-free decking, low-maintenance decking called MBC. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not mm-hmm. like, boo, 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 the more you know MBC. No, M. You mm. don't like acronyms. Yep. That's why. Mineral-based composites. So wood plastic composites obviously have wood in them. Mineral-based ones have minerals in them. What kind of minerals? Like the, I can only assume it's like the Flintstone vitamins crushed up. Just crushed up some Flintstone vitamins. Oh, I thought softener salts. Ooh. Oh, maybe there could be oh, some okay. of that in there too. Okay. Okay. So, iron, like iron. If you are, if you're iron deficient, you can do voyage just, decking. Just you chew on that decking for yeah. a bit. Yeah. Except you're iron deficient, you have way more energy. <laughs> Majestic Outdoors just said Tud Urban Dictionary. Nope. <laughs> don't, don't, don't look it up. No, thank you. Yeah, 
I waited as long as I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm low-key nervous right now what he's about to find dun, out. Dun, dun, dun. Well, so, speak. <laughs> let's get on with the, uh, let's go through their lineup a little bit. So at the, at the bottom end, they've released a new product, a new line called Trailhead this year. It's a wood plastic composite. Oh, frick. <laughs> I think we should change our website. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, site can't be reached. Uh, there it is. Can we get on with this? Or? Yeah. Or are you, you going to read this? Nope. Is it not appropriate for a rather... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would say... <laughs> yep, I'd say look that up. <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, uh, back onto the podcast. Taz.ca, folks. Taz.ca. <laughs> He's bright red. You'll need to look that up. Okay. Yeah. You know what? To be fair, every word is in the Urban Dictionary with some sort of yeah, perfect right. twist on it. So, Thanks, Majestic. We really appreciate that. <laughs> that's special right there. Uh, the Trailhead line is fairly new. They try, They attempted to release last year on it. Um, I, it was like in places, but not super available, I believe. And then they tweaked things and they re-released it this year. Yes. Uh, so it's a... It's a wood plastic composite with a capping on it. It's got uh, scallops to the bottom side, like most entry-level boards from a good brand do. Yep. Um, it's only seven-eighths of an inch thick, so it's a little bit thinner. Yeah. Still very strong. Light weight. Yeah, lightish weight on it. And an embossing similar, I would say similar to like Trex Enhanced line. Yeah. People would be familiar that with that line. Similar so kind of embossing. Maybe slightly deeper than that. Maybe. Right. And but coloring, but really, really nice coloring. Really nice. That's color. the big benefit of they it. They call that grain that's embossed in there, they call it a natural grain pattern. Natural. Now you know. Didn't spend too much time in the marketing boardroom on that one, hey? <laughs> Maybe it was like our name. Maybe they spent a long <laughs> we time. We just need to go with something not too complicated, you guys. No, it says what it is. How about natural wood grain? Yep. Promotion, Terry. So NWG. There's two, co three colors, sorry, of this uh, board available. And mm -hmm. uh, they're all variegated, so they all have a nice look to them. And warranty details, Wade, do you want to fire those off? I will. Got yourself they have a two fiver. 25 year structural warranty, 25 year fade and stain, and a 25 year removal and replacement warranty. There you warranty. go. That famous removal and replacement mm -hmm. warranty from decorators. So Exceptional. If you're looking for a budget board, this trail headline is quite a good one. I think it's like it should be in the conversation of your shopping experience for a budget uh, composite deck board. I think we should talk about the width of this as well because they sure. do mess with widths <gasps> more than anybody else in the industry. Do they? ever so this is only available in five and a half inches wide which i think is awesome average awesome <laughs> it's incredible yeah okay want to go to the next one yes Please when are we gonna me. when are we gonna put these ones in now do it now they've got porch boards okay next one up we is vista <laughs> that's it that's it i actually think that's exactly how that should be handled what is a porch board Porch board is just a narrower, a narrower profile. That's just it. Three and a half inches wide, yeah. tongue and groove. Often they're tongue and groove. You put so them on your porch. Line fastened, tight install, no gap. Like you would see in kind of like a colonial house, house on the porch. Like okay. it's porch board because that's common to narrow plank and on a porch. Uh, so these ones are, they have a couple options that are tongue and groove that you can blind fasten that way. And then there's also three and a half inch uh, non-tongue groove ones you can use as well if you want. So but. are they like more popular in certain parts? Yes. Geographically? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Like the Northeast US, I would think they're probably quite popular. Here, not. Right. Not. You know what? I don't, I don't see any colonial homes a here. A bunch of the <laughs> new houses are being built with porches. Maybe we have an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is. And treated deck boards on them. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. So we get a couple calls a year about porch board. And then by the time people find out how much it is to get it, because nobody around here, like none of our distributors carry it. Mm -hmm. The decorator's distributor does not carry it. The Trex distributor doesn't carry their narrow board. The Azek one doesn't carry their narrow board. So it's like, yeah. then you got to import it from the States and it gets expensive and everybody's like, ah, it's not that important. And Turns out I like full, wide boards. Like it's full lift quantity only. Right. right. So yeah. Do you know what's really hard to sell Wolf though? Too. Something that nobody carries. If someone were to put it like in distribution, this is you'd true. probably sell it. This is true. Somebody it's should. It's a cool it. look, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll have to bring one in someday. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> burned a hole right to the side of my face right there. No, thank you. Porch boards are popular to heritage districts. It says mm. Six Square Safe Deck Protect Inc. Yeah. We don't have any heritage districts here. We're not old enough yet. 
Well, we are, but we had a, what, what do we have there? Uh, what do they call that? Uh, what did we get there back there? You know, a while ago back? You know, wow. wow. <laughs> what did we get there? We had one of those things. He's auctioning. <laughs> I don't know now. Yeah. Regina, the cyclone. Regina cyclone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know when that happened. Centennial. Dirty 30s? No. Okay, yeah. Later? Sometime in that time. In Regina's history. Before we were born. In well Regina's before. history, there was a big, like, storm, cyclone. And so it wiped out a lot of the old buildings back then. Like it flattened the, the city. The old district. The old <laughs> ones, right? And so we don't have a whole lot of heritage properties here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why we protect the ones we have with such So there's vigor, a really vigor. there's a really good point. Uh, screened in room yeah. floor. So we could do yeah. that. Yeah. Everybody always asks what to do in those sunrooms. And I was like, porch board. It's a nice one when you can go tight with the boards and not let the bugs come up for How one, right? plywood and then vinyl plank flooring? Yeah. Uh, so anyways, once right. you get past the trailhead decking, and if you go on the website, they're going to have a lot of different categories because some of them are exclusive to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, but we're not talking about those ones. So when you get past trailhead, you get up to the Vista line. Vista. Now, Vista. Vista is still a wood plastic composite. However, it does not have the scallops running through it. Beautiful coloring. Wood grain's not as deep. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit more refined. Uh, the word they used was vertical. Oh, good it's old vertical, vertical grain. grain. It's a vertical Should grain. Should have known that. So this is a this is a great board a, as well. It's a great board. I'm going to keep these notes from you because you're obviously just reading off of them. Uh, available in two dimensions, <laughs> three and a half and five and a half inches wide. Okay. 25 so, year, 25 year, 25 year. For those people on the that are watching this right now or are going to see it on YouTube later, there's the two profiles. You've got a five and a half inch and a three and a half inch board on that. So if you do want to get, you know, uh, tricky, nope, creative, Creative with the layout of your deck, you could use you can mix in some of these narrow plank boards with your wider ones and do something with that if you want. So that's available from the Vista line. So yeah, a few colors in there that are really nice looking. It's a really nice looking line. It is a, like beautiful looking stuff. Yep, pretty good looking. But what really gets me out of bed in the morning, Wade? Hey, yep. Is that your, you have to pee? Your kids. <laughs> you want to know what it actually is? That I have to pee. Here's what it actually what is. keeps you out of bed. I'm still in a, I'm still in a pretty, uh, heavy funk of like, not funk, but like heavy. I'm just, my, my routine right now is to work late at night. Your so, natural sleep so, cycle is. Yeah, I'm all buggered up right now. I work till wee hours in the morning. I go to bed. So I sleep in later than my wife does. She gets up, works out. I step upstairs. The problem is we have a geriatric so dog. got a tud. We have a geriatric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got the tud. She's got no. T- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Urban dictionary. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, we have a geriatric dog. We have an old dog. Old. This dog's like, he's a little dog. He's like 16, 17 years old. He's he's like, he's really slowed down. He can't jump off things, can't do stairs, can't do nothing. And he's her suck. So she gets up nice and early, works out and stuff. She leaves the dog in bed because he's sleeping. He doesn't hear anything. But eventually at some point, almost assuredly, he will hear her working out downstairs and then want to get out. And I'm not ready to get up yet. My alarm's still an hour away or half an hour away. And he gets up on the corner of the bed and just starts making like awful noises because he can't jump down. He'll break everything. Mm. So he just build a the, ramp. I, we had stairs, but he wouldn't, he doesn't go down them anymore. Oh, like he won't ramp. do st- like nothing. He doesn't do any elevations. Like this, but then like this. <laughs> How big of a ramp? This would have to be a long ramp for him to like manage the decline. Yeah. Because a pretty tall bed, Wade. <laughs> Make it winding. That's like a wheelchair ramp. Wow. I think yeah, you yeah. should do that, Wade. Yeah. No, no, right? no, I no. Just with, build the boxes. With the we have other boxes. I have a few other build. things I need to build first. <laughs> so he gets up and starts whining and like <laughs> on the corner of the damn bed, and that's my. That's yeah. what I wake up he to every morning. Not bark anymore. You no, know, and then I have to like let him down, and then then it's like, well, I might as well get up. <laughs> Poor but guy. I don't. I go back to bed. Anyway, what gets me out of bed in the morning after the dog is. The mineral-based composites, because... <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> Tell me more, Shane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just like, what are we on the... What, what's it? The price is right. <laughs> 33. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the mineral-based composites are cool because they don't get hot. That's <laughs> No, that's not true. True. Um, they're cool because they're different. Okay? So all, everybody makes a wood plastic composite deck board... Mm-hmm. In a similar fashion. It's like, how do you make bran muffins versus how does somebody else make bran muffins? Well, you put bran and flour in it and like you tweak things, but it's really the same thing. Raisins or walnuts. This is a cupcake right here. Right. <laughs> These are cupcakes. <laughs> the mineral base is a cupcake. They're not muffins. They They're look like muffins. muffins, same shape. Right. Way better. Way better. So 
because there's no wood fiber in here, it has a few advantages. One being uh, the fact that you can't absorb water, can't attract mold, insects, nothing. There's so this can be installed anywhere. You could it doesn't need ventilation. And now that we're able to get to Mars, that's where we're going to put right? it. Right. If there's a deck on Mars, if Musk takes a deck to Mars, it's probably mm, probably likely going to be a deck creator's mineral based. Deck. Likely. Uh, so no potential risk of any water absorption. Not that that's a huge issue for anybody else either, but the potential is there. So can so you like, this is guaranteed to not your regular wood based composites. Can they like rot? They could, or they could mold. Sh- the wood fibers in the core of the board could swell if they stayed submerged in water for a long period of time and never dried out. Could no underwater decks. You cannot install underwater decks with a, any like with the Trex or Fibron or Timbertech or like those guys, right. can the two no people warranty. that say they'll no the two people that say you <laughs> can true. do that? There's probably others, but two big ones that say you can are Moisture Shield and Decorators. It says you can build under underwater decks because who wouldn't? Uh, right, exactly. <clears throat> it's never occurred to me to put a deck underwater. That's where I want my next deck. But I think I'm going to. I'm going to start now. But the real world application might be a dock that's like, it's not in the water, but it's constantly wet, getting splashed mm-hmm. up underneath, you know, storms, wind, whatever. It's just, it's it, it's constantly getting... Uh, Lapped. <laughs> I was going to say moist. I thought that was gross. That was grosser. Uh, well, or was lapping at the dock. Or around a pool or a hot tub maybe that's, you know, you're in all the time. Like, I, like there's some scenarios. Like maybe a public pool mm-hmm. that is like, commercial active all the time Ooh, yeah. always wet maybe something like that so these are the best for water they're great for water i mean so are pvc deck boards because there's no right. wood in them but this is one way of doing that so also super strong highest strength to weight ratio in the industry yes right? boat launch you can't break oh, these things launches. like they've encouraged people to hit these things with sledgehammers it shows you can't sledgehammer them in half you could with other boards so yep. they're very 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 strong and the other thing that's really, two more things that are really, really amazing about them. The traction is unbelievable on it. So for another, it, it, we're talking about around pools again. Mm-hmm. It's fine being wet all the time and nobody's going to slip. That brings me to the point. Why do pool installers put the slipperiest things around the pool? So you they, don't run. Because they install pools. They don't install the things around them. They don't care. Okay. So you don't run? That's your answer? Don't run? <laughs> yeah, does that work? Does it hold water? Holds water. Is it wet? It's wet. Our job's done here. <laughs> <laughs> it's over, right? Yeah, but what about the sides where everybody keeps falling down? That's not my job. Yeah. Not my job. Call Simcoe. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fix that up for you. <laughs> so this is the Frontier Line. This is the, the entry-level uh, mineral-based composite board that you have the option of. There's two colors in it. They discontinued one last year. There was three. Now there's two. Yada, yada, yada. They're solid colors. The wood graining. What do they call this one? Uh, this grain. is a solid color. No no descriptor of grain at all. So Horizontal. <laughs> there's, <laughs> like, it looks vertical to me. Even they don't care about enough about this one to give it a name on the wood grain. So this doesn't get one. So we'll call it just vertical color. grain. Sure. Vertical, vertical grain. grain. Solid color, vertical grain. Now, if you step up to the well, vault tell line. You about the dimensions of this board? Yeah. Five and a half inches. Good. Uh, if you step up Structural to, warranty? Oh, yeah. Let's get into that. 20. 50 a year. <gasps> Twice as many years. Twice as many years? Right. They doubled it up. I'd be dead before that board. What yeah, about you, what failed? Wait, what about your fade and stain, your <gasps> removal and replacement? Fade though? and stain still the same. Twenty five and uh, s- the uh, removal and replacement also twenty five. Oh, good. Oh, good. The board will last fifty, but we're only backing it for twenty five of oh, those. Excellent. Which is really, really good. Which is pretty good. Good. It's a quarter of my life. Another yep. thing we didn't mention is the weight of these ones. You mentioned it on the trailhead, but it's more of, an, of a bonus for these guys. These are light, like PVC light, so much th- lighter than most composites. Yeah, this is a. A byproduct of the mineral-based composite, right? So all of the lines we talk about now will be lighter. Very light, yeah. And they're also going to do these things. They have virtually zero expansion and contraction. And that's the one. I said there's two more things, traction and this one. This one is badass. 35% lighter, and it's good for water and ground. So how much, like, does the expansion really fix the big anti-miter coalition problem. Yeah, it's going to torch our t-shirt sales. I'm a little pissed about yeah. this. <laughs> right? Like if you're a decorator's guy, you're probably not an anti-miter. That's not true. A lot of them still are. Yeah. But this is the one board in the industry that you actually can commit to doing a miter on. You can miter all of the boards and people do all the time. It just looks like garbage. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> Except for these ones. <laughs> Except for these ones. Don't go chasing waterfalls. So this is a true story. These are very thermally stable. And so where other wood plastic composites are not, um, and PVC boards are especially not, when it's hot out, they expand. And when it's cold out, they shrink. And so anytime you have a joint, it's going to open. And in Saskatchewan, we have those huge temperature We're about swings. as wild as it gets yeah. here, as far as temperature swings. We have a very hot, dry summer, and we have a very cold, dry winter. And so like our temperature swings literally can be 80 degrees Celsius from summer to, to like it can be 100 What's that in Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit? <laughs> 100 Fahrenheit in the summer. And it can minus be 40. minus 40 Fahrenheit in the winter. So 140 degree Fahrenheit swing. Mm-hmm. And so it's about as extreme as it gets here. And these... And I know what you're asking. Don't... Why would you stay here? Why? Why would you, Why would the settlers stop? Why would they be like, yep, this is where we're going to do it. We're the cyclone. Gonna, we're going to build a house here. <laughs> the cyclone stopped them. It wrecked, <laughs> it wrecked their wagons. Where are you going to go without a wagon? I would have walked if somebody would have told me how brutally cold it was going to well, get in the winter. You I'd don't know. Like, Maybe they actually broke down somewhere around uh, Weyburn and they walked and walked <laughs> and made it to Regina and they're yeah. like, we're tired of walking. Tired of walking. <laughs> they were walking the wrong way. They went, Listen, north. you don't know. Uh, so I think the land was free, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that was the reason. I, I, that's a true story. I believe that <laughs> anybody claiming this here. <laughs> No? No takers? No. All right. Couldn't even see anyone for miles. Roll out the tarps. Yeah. <laughs> and then then the mosquitoes came. This is the only <laughs> one we don't have to fight anybody for. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, thermally stable, and, and we, our market is in, like proof of that because we've had some contractors go out and install this stuff, and some of the decks, like that, the one decked out did with uh, Costa and Kaya. No, Costa and me. they did Dark Slate. Was it Dark Slate? They did a deck in those colors and they had a ton of miters in it because it was basically like a, a four quadrant deck that had borders meeting in the middle. So mm. there was like there were a lot of miters happening on that yeah. thing. And then they had cascading stairs around it. So every corner that the, cas- the stairs cascaded around had a bunch of miters. Mm-hmm. And it went through a full season of plus 40 summer, minus 40 winter and still looked great the next year. And I have not seen another synthetic decking product do that yet. Yeah, it was incredible. So if you're somebody who's bothered by, you know, the joints opening up on your deck, then this fixes that for you. And at the same time, gives you a remarkable uh, traction as well. Okay. Are you going to talk about the vault line? Just <laughs> briefly, just... The vault line is, yeah, same physical makeup as the frontier line, yeah. uh, as a mineral-based composite, but it has a cathedral-style graining to it and not the embossing. The embossing is the same as the frontier line, but the coloring is arrows, yeah. Like it's pointing one direction, right? Which they call right. like a th- cathedral style, like a Pope's hat. Like a Pope's hat. Not uh, a Pope's nose. Not not a Pope's nose. Pope's hat. <laughs> flat grain. <laughs> Just a flat. That one gets flat grain. Uh, so two colors, dusk and mesquite. Yeah. They dropped a color over the winter again here. So it's down to two colors, a grain of brown. Uh, really good looking stuff. Why flat grain? Why is it called flat? Well, I don't know. The other one was vertical. It doesn't stand up at all. Oh, okay. He likes to lay down, lays down flat. Now in between, which uh, is a is a like a what do we call this? Is this even a, even a line? It's very similar makeup to the vault line. It's picture got no coloring line. in it. They call it just a picture frame board. Picture frame line. Now this is called dark slate. There's one color in this line. The board is 21 feet long, which is longer than what the other boards are made mm, up of. The whole They're, voyage line. Oh, is right. They actually did that. Add that. That's a new thing. They can do 21 foot long in your picture frames. Whole voyage line. So uh, this used to be the only one. You should answer that question before we Where are we at? On. The very top one. What, what is, is the name? name of the one you just mentioned with thermal stability and not slippery? So, so that would be any of the Decker's lines that are the mineral-based composites, which would be the frontier line, the vault line, and the voyage line. Those three are very, very, very thermally stable. Impressively so. Oh, there you go. So when we Thanks, talk guys. about when we talk about um, woodcut terminology, so now he's yeah. talking about the grain pattern on the vault line, right? And so the woodcut terminology is a flat, flat grain, grain or flat sawn. Gotcha. And so the um, now we know for reference, like for what we're talking about here, the the stats that I've heard and read and experienced is if you take a twenty foot unfastened composite deck board and you allow it to go through an 80 degree Fahrenheit swing, Fahrenheit, so not even like as much as we swing, 80 degree Fahrenheit swing, it will <laughs> it will expand and contract up to a quarter inch 
over 20 feet if it's not fastened down wow. from cold to hot. So that's quite a bit. Yeah. And you don't think that until you add it to the end of your nose and then it's, and then it's quite then a bit. It's, then it's long. A PVC deck board can go up to a half an inch. That's a lot. That's all I have for a thumb on my left hand. Right? That's a lot. These boards are somewhere just a tiny hair north of a sixteenth of an inch. Wow. So it's it's, it's virtually very, very minimal. Virtually zero. Virtually. You have to say it. So you can't say unfastened. None, right? you, can't, you can't say zero. You can't say zero. Okay, so this dark nice. slate board. Sue you, you're in the States. <laughs> this dark slate board is available in a couple of dimensions now as well. It certainly right? is. We have a narrow board in this line as well. Or sorry, a wide well, board in this uh, line as well. Five wide and a half board. and seven and a quarter. And so the seven and a quarter, I think, is actually a really good move. Because then you're able to put your railing post on that picture frame board that's seven and a quarter inches wide and your and your railing post is now not staggered between two boards. Right. I think this was a good move. And don't these come in a lot better length too? Because right, I feet. experience that 21. problem all the time when my tud hides my belt. I would right. think if I had a wider belt, my tud wouldn't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> get a better yeah, my get tuds. a bigger buckle. Yeah. <laughs> get a tud's buckle. The other place where that's sometimes nice is for a wider step. If you want to mix and match, do a wider tread on your oh, step. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Look at you go. Picture frame board no more. Hold on to that one since Let's the start of the show. Not be breaking any rules, though, because you're only allowed to have your stairs at 11 inches wide. You 14. Do. Four, well, it depends. 14 here. Yeah. Um, so anyways. Uh, grooved on one side. Yeah. That's, that's cool that they groove mm. on one side. Mm. Grooved on one side is so good. So you can have your finished edge on the outside and you can start using your hidden fastener clips immediately with your picture frame board, which with everybody else's products out there, you, you can't. You got to still screw this side down and then you have to start your next board with a screw too. And then your clips. Mm. This you can now just start with your clips. Pretty good, right? That's really pretty good. good. Really good. Now the color of this. Dark blue. It's, it's definitely a, got a bit of a bluish gray to it, very dark gray, but it's designed to complement every board in the vault and voyage lines because the color that this board is is the accent color that's streaking in just what every one of these boards <laughs> so this actually like it works better with some than others in my opinion but it can work with all of them mm -hmm. so if we start getting into we didn't bring all the colors here but this is an obvious one dusk because it's a gray board is going to look very good without but even if you pull out something like mesa yeah, which is like a like a rosy orangey color board, it looks good with this bluish gray and you wouldn't think yeah. that it would, but it can because of the color streaking. Kaya, a brown board, brown gray, but it can. They just work. Does it match? <laughs> yeah. So that's, it's a really cool, it's he a really cool thing. like the sham wow guy. <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> you don't think it can work, but it can work. <laughs> <laughs> and for only sixty five ninety nine. Wow. <laughs> I thought Vince is here. He is here. <laughs> yeah. He's gotten in trouble with a few tuds in his day. Uh, so really cool option. You don't have to use this board. If you want to do an accent with it, you can. Uh, not everybody does, but it's an, it's a great option to kind of like add some visual appeal to your deck. Yep. I think. It's really, really great. Now, now we're getting to the creme de la creme. Hey? Yep. Voyage. Oh. Voyage. Oh. Voyage. Voyage. In Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> this line is incredible. So we've already talked about all the great benefits of the mineral-based composites in the previous two lines, Vault and, and Frontier lines. Correct. The Voyage line has all those same benefits. Yeah. The thermal stability, the... Lighter put weight. Put it in water, what doesn't matter, lighter weight. 50-year structural warranty, 25-year fade and stain, 25-year removal and replacement. Right? Mm -hmm. What doesn't this line up do? This, uh, well... Doesn't fly. Right? No flying decks. Could, though. Hover it's, deck? Because it's light. <laughs> this line here has incredible traction. The Frontier and the Vault line has really good traction. Better than pretty much anything else in market. Yep. This line then from they said, Voyage... Then they said, you know what? We want 34% greater traction. <laughs> and they did. And they did. Do you remember the very first time you walked on that deck? At the, it was a trade show we went Bam! To? Face first! <laughs> broke my knee! <laughs> but we're Canadian. We didn't sue. We just know. stood up and we're like, I have really pay attention oh. there. <laughs> it's pretty sticky. <laughs> Eric Sorry, Teru. I fell. <laughs> Eric Teru likes the voyage. <laughs> <laughs> ah, finally, I knew it. Finally, the French episode, he says. <laughs> Uh, 
this line gives all the benefits of the, of the other stuff, plus enhanced traction, 34% better, even over the already amazing traction of the other ones. So this stuff really actually is incredible. When you walk on it, it's, <laughs> it's grippy as all hell. Like it's, it's crazy how much traction it has. Worst slip and slide material in the world. Worst slip and slide material. Oh ever. yeah. You don't want to like, you, you want a belly rash. You try this stuff out. Peel right off. It would just like you dive and it would catch just below the collar of your shirt and then gone. Worst rug burn. <laughs> but the strange thing is, is it's not super rough. It is like, you can feel it's grippy, but mm -hmm. you know how, if you like rub your hand over something like Fibron's promenade line. Yes. It's kind of like, and even the Paramount line, it's mm -hmm. kind of like scratchy like it's 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 got like little it's like a porcupine it's got like those hooks <laughs> yeah you it's know. barbed Barb. yeah. that's what it's i was barbed. looking for so it's not like that. this though. is more like chameleon feet Ooh. yeah Ooh. they just stick to things that's got to be on the marketing promo somewhere uh, i did on there chameleon. but jace you can use it if you'd like yeah. chameleon feet graining <laughs> what did i say in that podcast a while ago and i said that they better put it on their website and then they never they never did i said the color like, combination yeah, yeah. was Oh, do you remember that? I no. do remember it. Fine. Put but it on I a t-shirt. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> put it on a t-shirt instead. So this Voyage line is incredible. It's, it's like, it's thermally stable. It's light to work with. It fastens like super easy with the camo system, which is an improved fastener. So are the other ones. And the coloring is beautiful. So instead of the cathedral grain of the vault line, we've got this hairline grain. What do they call it? Oh, I don't know. Since we're like vertical this. grain again. Yeah. They went back. They went back to the old well of it's, vertical grain. It's probably a wood term yeah. <laughs> based on all of their other woodcut terminology, wood cut terminology, Tra trademarking Jeez. like chameleon feet. That's right. done. <laughs> Spider-Man <Yeah>. boards. <laughs> uh, so seven, eight thick again, like the rest of the lineup, uh, because it is insanely, insanely strong. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this stuff. It really is one of the coolest products in the market. Uh, it's doing extremely well. This board, you know, there, there was a lot of years where composite was composite, like a cap composite was cap composite. And everybody had kind of picked their brand and they liked working with it, whatever else. This is one that has been making a splash and has been converting a lot of contractors away from other brands. So like this is a winner for sure. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Now, Wade, I like the only drawback, the only drawback to this thing is that yeah. it's only available in this boring five and a half inch wide plank. Not no That's, more. My, what? Not anymore, my friend. It is totally different. Have at her. Blow my mind. Three and a half, five and a half, seven and a quarter, and da da da, nine and a quarter inches. Oh, wide. no, you didn't. That was the wrong one. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should uh, There it is <laughs> It has a bunch of profiles You know what they did when they were putting this together They didn't give two Shits about the lumber yards <laughs> <laughs> Yeah no they were like, okay, though. They were like, we're going to do all of these Lines and all of these colors And all of these sizes Like if you wanted to carry this line From front To back If you wanted to carry the voyage line All skews you'd have to have almost four acres of land. Did this just yeah. come out this year? There's some new, like these, the these multi wits The multi wits came out la uh, last? The nine and a quarter. Ago. So the nine and a quarter grooved one side is new this year, but the three and a half, five, sorry, three and a half, seven and a quarter and nine and a quarter were available last year in grooved dimensions mm. Mm. and solid. This year, they did the nine and a quarter groove one side. They should have done 11 and a quarter. I've expressed this already. You could do a stair tread, one board. One Why wouldn't you do 11 and a quarter? It's next. It's coming. Nine and a My quarter. prediction for 2022 is an 11 and a quarter board. You heard it here first. You heard folks. here. <laughs> so I'm just like, you're like, where do you, how do you think this happened? Here's how I think this happened. You want to hear a little skit? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, it's probably because there's didn't a have lot, any right? Trade shows. There's a lot. Ten. They didn't care about the dealer. They're like, I don't care about how much yeah, I exactly. stock. But I don't think this is intentional. Skews. There's nine skews per color. I think what happened was one, two, the plant three, manager four, walked five. into the lunchroom one day, mm. and Terry, the quality control manager, T Dog, having a little bit too long of a lunch. Forty-five skews. He left Brad, the summer student, yep. on the extrusion line. Ugh. Or the poultrusion line, whatever you want to call it. You never do that. You, you shouldn't. He's Not brand Brad. new. He's yeah. only been working here for six days. Ugh. The first three days he yeah, was in a like classroom a training. Super smart dude. We Brad is smart. It. Brad, he is he smart. It. But he's still a summer student. He's post secondary student. He's like he's got good grades. 
But the fact of the matter is he shouldn't be running the extrusion line by himself. Nope. With no supervision. Yep. This was irresponsible of Terry to, see, hold your horses, Shane. T-Dog. 11 and a quarter is coming. <laughs> So Terry's off there crafting down, like crafting down some craft dinner, mac and cheese to the Americans. Yeah, it wouldn't be craft dinner. Um, he's wolfing it down, taking an extra long break, probably playing on his phone. A little Why bit is of it not craft dinner? Craft bit of is angry in birds. the U.S. Craft dinner is not a little bit of Angry Birds, mac and cheese. Brad running the line out there, doing his own thing. Oh, Brad! Plant manager walks out. Brad has been messing with the settings in the computer. He's spit out a whole lot <laughs> a few lifts worth of boards because he's playing with buttons he doesn't understand he just beep, boop, beep, boop. he was supposed to program in five and a half inches oh right? this is what happened i see you, you know where this me. went wrong i'm now back mm. brad was canadian mm. brad put in five and a half centimeters oh here comes three and a half inch profile that's right pretty close right conversion it's close so brad runs off all these boards plant manager comes out <laughs> he's like what are, what are you doing? And Brad's like, sorry, my bad. Can't hey. blame me. I wanted to ask Terry what I was supposed to do, but he disappeared. What are we going to do with these boards now? So this is how this happened. He, Brad had run off all these different widths of deck boards, pissing around with the extrusion machine. Nobody was there to supervise them. They I end up with all these boards. They had too much waste. They don't want to sink themselves. They're like, we got to sell these to somebody. That's right. They're like, I know a guy. <laughs> Sean, premier out your living. <laughs> Dude jumps all over anything that's different. <laughs> Calls up Sean. Sean, you think you could work with some of these different profiles? Heck yeah, bud. I'm all over it. Boom. 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 Multi-width decking. Sounds legit? Yeah. Okay. Good. Sounds well, legit. I think that's how it happened. Mm-hmm. So just I, Googled, to- uh, I Googled it to fact check you, and there, uh, nothing came up. Check Urban Dictionary. Tell me. Search for Brad. <laughs> Brad. Okay, so to give some context to the podcast, uh, Instagram, YouTube people, hold up this last board and we'll show the different varied widths of this stuff because maybe just with numbers alone, it's hard to get uh, a good feel for how wide these actually are. Certainly Brad didn't catch it. It's because he's a... (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to spend more time in Urban Dictionary. That's what I can tell you. Oh, Brad. <laughs> okay, so here's the four profiles from, I don't know which way you're going to be seeing it, from from small to large. And so that that nine and a quarter is a beast, man. That is a big slab of material. Mm-hmm. Like you could use that for probably a bench top. You know, like a drink yeah. rail or something. And certainly when the 11 you know, quarter comes if out, you were doing that's a, a bench. Plant or box, you could do a, like you could wall cap. That you could use this as a wall cap. A two by six, two by six wall cap. I hope there's somebody that actually works in the plant named Brad. <laughs> this is going to stick. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Brad. You, you totally <laughs> say, yeah, our bad, Brad. Uh, absolutely. There's some things you could do with that nine and a quarter inch board. I'm not sure it's like, I'm not sure I would lay that down on the deck too often, but I would use that in a lot of other ways. So certainly there's an advantage to being able to use this as a spine board. If your deck is going to be 20 sure. feet long or 22 feet long. Or- yep. Yeah. There's, it, it just gives you some flexibility to do some things with it, right? And like I said, as soon as that gets a little bit wider to the 11 and a quarter, that's a stair tread all day long and a bench top all day long. Mm-hmm. Yep. Little bar nook, whatever, one board instead of having a bunch of seams. I think that's yeah. that's a cool potential for that. There's a question in here. Look at Who is the question? Are these still much hotter than wood to the touch? Okay. Are we going to go down this path? Sure. You have to. They asked. Yes. Any more questions for the episode today? Nope. (laughs) So here's the thing that, here's the one thing that I was, I'll be honest, I was a little disappointed to hear, aside from Decker's putting some home hardware across Canada this year. That that disappointed me too. (laughs) But (laughs) you should should talk about it. No, that's not the thing I was talking about. What I was talking about is (laughs) what we had heard prior to doing our own heat test was that this stuff stayed cooler than other uh, composite deck boards. Yes. And we had even heard that from some contractors that said it feels like it's not as hot when I'm carrying it around. And so we dove into that a little bit. And we're like, hey, Deckers, is this? And they, like, I can't, I can't say whatever was said, but they were, they were looking at it too and trying to see if there was something there. Because everybody noticed it when you actually touched the board. Yeah. Mm. It was like, well, this mm-hmm. thing, it feels less hot than other composites I work with. But there's no... Like there's no science, there's no data on that to say it. It was just like, 
Terry came back from lunch and was like, yeah, well, this thing isn't that hot. Look, even didn't even me. burn my arms today. <laughs> exactly. So we were hopeful that we would do some heat tests and stuff and find out that it was actually stayed cooler because then like, oh man, then it stays cooler than other boards too. Checks all like, the boxes. game over. Game over. So we did all our heat tests again this year with all like a bunch of brands, bunch of colors. There's probably what, 60 boards out there? I don't even know. Way too many. Like a lot. It was really hot. And it turned out to be unfortunately not the case. It was not any cooler than other boards of light color. In fact, nope. the darker ones were the that, hottest that, that we dark tested. dark slate was super hot. Dark slate and Kaya were hot. So are they any better than other composites? No, but they're not any worse either. They're like comparable to the average composite. The dark one, because it's such a dark color, is a very hot board. Yep. But that's the rule of science when it comes to how hot deck boards get. Are they a dark color? Yes. Well, it's going to get hotter. Is it a lighter color? It's going to, well, it's not going to get as hot. Mm-hmm. The positive spin on that is if you live in a snowy climate and you use dark boards like that, the sun comes onto those in the spring, you have to shovel less snow. That's true. Yeah, melts right off. So, uh, yes, they're going to be a little bit hotter than wood, but not much. Wood still gets quite warm in the hot sun too. When hot sun mm-hmm. touches things, mm-hmm. it warms them up. Surprising. <laughs> Surprising fact. When you word it that way. Ball of fire. All of a sudden, our expectations for our decks to stay cool is sounds a little bit unreasonable. Mm. So, yes, they're going to get warm. So does wood. The difference between a light color like Tundra and a wood deck is hardly noticeable. Uh, but the difference between a dark color like Dark Slate and a wood deck would be noticeable yep. to your feet and your hands. Yeah. Sand. Sand also gets hot. Sand gets hot. When you walk on it. Everything else gets hot. And I really like that. Things get hot. I don't ever hear anybody like can't they make this concrete out of concrete or the sidewalk out of concrete that doesn't get as hot like can't be nice put, if they can't they make put concrete? cool sand on this beach but the nice thing is your deck's not going to get uh destroyed if it's submerged in water correct cool yeah. deck right okay right keep that cool keep it cool just pour some water <gasps> on it so yeah, not not a strength, but now also not a weakness. Of a the temperatures. Your deck can have water features. <gasps> now edge water features on your deck. Our understanding too, though, we did the cool off test, is that this performs more like a PVC in yeah. that it will cool off faster. Yes. Than a traditional composite. Yes. So that's good. Sun, when the sun goes, goes down under clouds. Down for the day, or water's splashing on this because it can. Because it can. Why it's around you? a pool or something. It will cool off faster than you know a, a wood plastic composite board would. So there's that side benefit, but mm-hmm. in direct sunlight, scorching hot out, it's it's hot too. So are you? Everything's hot, <laughs> and your chair you're about to sit in, and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm hot even when it's cold out. <sighs> yep. Look at Wade. Pretty Urban Brad. Dictionary. Pretty Brad move right there. Easy, easy Brad. <laughs> nice, nice Brad move, Brad. <laughs> So that is the decorators decking lineup, and so that should be it. Great I have stuff. a question. Who has a question? I do. Oh, write Wait, it in there so will, you can see it. Will it bend? No. Does not bend super well. No. Oh, so don't try uh, so it. I, we haven't actually tried it yet, but we've seen some other guys have tried it, and they've managed like very, very, very moderate success getting a slight, but not even a usable curve to it. Like yeah, it's not before it it creases and bends. So. Super strong, but um, if you're wanting to do a curved deck, you should probably consider a PVC do- uh, board. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this question. Look at- <laughs> I'm the voice. Now that I think Bryce is an employee, do we get to see what he looks like to asking be- for a friend? To be fair, I'm in quite a few episodes. I'm in the heat episode. I've done a few episodes with Wade. Yeah, that's completely true. <laughs> It's not like I've never been on the He's other side of the on. camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this could be fun. Maybe you should be the Wilson. Remember Home Improvement? Yeah. yeah. Wilson? Just like from... Just... We should start the, taking pictures of him here fence. and posting them, but it's behind the mic and the laptop all the time, so all you see is the eyes, and it's yep. like producer Bryce. We could do this. <laughs> Any parting thoughts on this stuff? Warranty's fantastic. Fantastic products. Um availability is going to be your only struggle versus like a Trex or something. It's not going to be as easy to find yet. Certainly. It's a, it's an up and coming brand. You'll start to see it in a lot more places in 2021. That's yeah. for sure. What about cutting it? What about working with it? Okay. Yeah. That's a good thing. Let's bring that up. <laughs> yeah. To talk about. Cutting, cutting's not amazing with it. <gasps> like it piles up a little bit on your the downside. That's a downside for sure. It's, it's just that it will be different than you're used to. Right. And so typically when you cut, Wood plastic composites, the 
you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to pile up as much on your saw. It doesn't dull your saw blade as fast. This stuff is going to, it's going to, mm. it'll like kind of gum up on the back of the saw and it'll dull your blade faster. Uh, you'll have more success with using a, like a less teeth on the saw blade, right? So use a 40 tooth saw blade on your 10 inch miner saw. I have less teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. For some reason in my head, it was the TikTok thing, the piranha videos that go around. Mm. Have you seen that? I one? don't watch TikTok. You just said less teeth, and I thought of that right away. <sighs> yeah, it was, it's like all these. It's a guy. The voiceover is like all these girls out here biting their bottom lip, driving guys crazy. But if you try, have you tried biting your top lip? <laughs> go at it, you little piranha! You and these girls are reposting, going like. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do that, it cuts really easy. Yeah. So that's that's certain, something to be aware of. Does not indicate that the quality of the board or the product is any worse because of it. If you look at something like, well, cedar cuts really easily and mm -hmm. Ipe doesn't cut really easily, but what's a better product to put on your deck? Well, Ipe is clearly leaps and bounds above cedar as far as yeah, a lot of different categories. Just something to be aware of. Uh, but it's harder to work with. Cortex, this is a little bit harder to work with. Yeah, Cortex plugs are available. I'd probably pre-drill all of this before I put any of the, like the hidden fasteners in it. Yeah, Pearl that's plug. a good advice. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, it's pretty good stuff. So, it's amazing. Beautiful looking stuff. Yep. They changed the game with their mineral based composite. It is a game changer. Yeah. I don't know. And Bre like Jace would probably come in here and tell us exactly what's going on with that. But I don't know if that's a technology that's kind of like proprietary, if they've got that nailed down or if we'll see other board manufacturers and maybe there's probably is some others because there's using different fillers other than wood is not new. Like there's other yep. companies that use different things and so yeah. maybe some of them are mineral based, but the exact way that this is actually extruded or uh, molded, I should say. I believe is proprietary. And so I think that they've kind of got a patent on that, but, um, so I don't know if we'll see anybody else that comes out with this exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like wood plastic composites, everybody can do that. I don't know that somebody will be able to do exactly this, but well, I know like one thing is like when you break it, it has like these fibers. You in can't it. break it. We cut it apart with an ax. That's it's how we super got it open. strange yeah. that way. It's, it's got looks, like fibers in it. Yeah. It looks like tearing apart a tree. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the long fibers. We've taken a yep. picture of doing that after we axed it there a couple of years ago. Took a picture up close. So you couldn't see the outside of the board. And there's no, like, and we posted the picture, I remember, and people, I said, guess what wood this is? And people are guessing all sorts of wood types. Mm -hmm. And it was freaking plastic from the middle of one of these boards. But it looked that realistically wood. And that's from their fiber strand technology, Wade. Nice. <laughs> and uh, what a good marketing team they have. Right? Hey. Eh? And so it becomes from the fact that the board is stretched into into shape as opposed to like pushed through an extruder. Mm. Something about that process gives it that linear fibrous uh, makeup that's really strong. So yes, it's proprietary, the exact process anyway. So there's some clarification. What else you guys got? You done? I'm done. I'm done. I'm talking about this stuff for way too long. Mailing in another favorite of the decorators, folks, just selling more decorators decks. God. It's phenomenal how many people call us and tell us that they bought decorators because of our pod, because of how we talk about it on the podcast and the YouTube. Yep. Someday so. we'll get uh, we'll get some money for that. Yep. Kickbacks. I'm sure the checks just lost. probably went to our old address. Ah. Uh, they always uh, send it to our old address. Jace, send me a quick text. I'll uh, give you the new address. There's probably a bunch of checks over there. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. It was winter. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Site, Have a good week. Shop, ultimate .com. Hit us right away for sponsorships. So tell us if you want to collaborate. Let's go. Check us out on any social networks. Thank you for listening. <laughs>